We can just assume how much UFO evidence is being held back from the public. But we get quite a good impression when we study the latest events on the Caribbean island of Puerto Rico, the so-called 51st state of the USA, a quasi-colony without a right to vote, investigated by the local journalist Jorge Martin. There have been many uh, incidents in which uh, UFOs have been seen over inhabited areas by many people. And at the same time, uh, military aircraft such as AWAC radar planes, or maybe even uh, as explained by the witnesses, uh, F-14 Tomcats, jet fighters, or some aircraft from the Puerto Rico Air National Guard that have been seen chasing these objects. In some occasions, there have been some incidents in which people say uh, there seems to be some struggle between the UFOs and the jet fighters, and in some occasions, uh, military personnel has been seen in these places checking the situation. This happened in December 28, 1988 at 7.45 p.m. Uh, the people of the area of uh, Cabo Rojo and Lajas, two towns to the southwest of the island, uh, that night saw a very huge uh, ball of blue light, as we see here in the drawing, and, uh, that was flying over the Sierra Bermeja Mountains, a small ridge there where many of these incidents have been happening in Puerto Rico. And then this ball of light changed, and it changed to another color, to a huge ball of yellowish light, and the witnesses all could see that this was part of a triangular craft, very big in size, uh, and this yellow light was on the, uh, underneath the object. It was a, almost semicircular, something like a ball or a ball of yellow light, very bright. And the two jet fires were trying to intercept it, and in three different occasions made it veer away and change its trajectory, its direction. In the third occasion, the object stopped in midair. One of the jet fighters seemed to, uh, as if it was going to collide with the object by the back of it, and the people began screaming because they believed there was going to be a collision and an explosion and something uh, terrible might happen. But what happened was that the jet fighter just disappeared, vanished in midair next to the to the to the UFO. The other jet fighter kept flying next to it by the right side of it and then all of a sudden it also disappeared, it vanished. The UFO then came back again, turned around, flew over an area known there as the Saman Lake, it's a small pond surrounded by many palm trees and over these palm trees I would say at about a, an altitude of a hundred feet from the palm trees, it, it divided itself this huge triangular object into two different objects. It split with a luminous explosion, a soundless explosion, a very bright light. And both parts of the craft, one flew very fast to the, to the north and one flew very fast to the east and disappeared. There were other witnesses that say that there was a surge fighter that was checking on the situation from a distance. But when that pilot of that surge jet fighter. So what happened, apparently he tried to flee the area and three small uh, balls of red light came out from the, from the UFO and began chasing it and they disappear to the north. They don't know what happened to the, this surge jet fighter. How many witnesses followed this event? Up to now more than a hundred witnesses. What are your conclusions? Well, this, this incident did occur. It's a very important one. Uh, when you have more than 100 witnesses uh, that describe the same scene to you, they make the same drawings to you, what they saw, uh, uh, all the details fit with all the descriptions. And we have other information in the, uh, due to the investigation we made. For example, that this jet craft must have been from the Navy of the United States because that day the Puerto Rico Air National Guard had no uh, airplanes or any air practices in the area. And Roosevelt Road Naval Station in Ceiba, a principal base in the Caribbean from the U.S., did have some air practices that night and personnel in the area, even though they denied it. But the FAA, Federal Aviation Administration in San Juan, confirmed to us that there were practices from Roosevelt Road Naval Station there.
A similar triangle-shaped UFO was observed and filmed by hundreds of witnesses in March 1990 over Belgium. Two F-16 fighter jets tried to intercept the UFO. The pilots reported that the object increased speed in just three seconds from 200 to 850 miles per hour. Mr. Martin, are there any official statements regarding the incidents in Puerto Rico? As a matter of fact, uh but due to the situation happening in the southwest of Puerto Rico, it's all around the island, but in the southwest it's more obvious, more, more visible, because of the many incidents that are happening there constantly. And it's a heavily populated area. Uh, the police and the civil defense and the authorities uh, began a very intensive disinformation program, trying to ridicule and to make everything seen as a lie, as fabrication by those people who were informing all of this. Uh, but fortunately, after they began doing this, especially the civil defense agency in Puerto Rico, a source of ours uh, gave us this letter that was sent secretly by the state director of the civil defense agency of Puerto Rico, Colonel Jose M. Enoya, in which he states clearly that the situation is real, that they are keeping an eye on the situation and investigating everything, uh, just to, to be sure that this, what is happening and these sightings and this incident with UFOs and USOs on known submerged, submerged objects also, because they come out from, this, from the sea and, uh, and into the sea. Many people have seen this happen there. Uh, it's not a threat to the, to the security of the people of Puerto Rico on the Puerto Rican territory. As you know, something that doesn't exist can be a threat to anyone. There's also another thing. He says here that uh, several agencies of, the, of Puerto Rico are involved in the investigation secretly, the military, the radio observatory of Arecibo, and they have always denied for many years that they had anything to you to do uh, whatever with the UFO situation, and it's stated here by him that they do have something to do and they are checking on the situation. And Mr. Noya, these words, written by him are very important because he's the liaison between the Puerto Rico uh, National Guard Army and the Defense Intelligence Agency. He's their man in Puerto Rico. The yes, and the Defense Intelligence Agency is like the CIA in the military. So he knows what he's talking about. On the morning of May 14, 1988, Amori Riviera, a young man from Puerto Rico, photographed a giant disc, followed and circled by two jet interceptors. What makes the sensational pictures even more interesting is Riviera's claim that he had contact with the occupants of this UFO. Hello, my name is uh, Amori Rivera. Este, I live in Puerto Rico, and back in 1988, uh, I was working in a nightclub and uh, there was a, a musical group there. One of my cousins wanted me to photograph the musical group and she loaned me a camera with some film. On my way back home, uh, I encountered uh, two small uh, beings, two small strange men, which I didn't think were uh, men from outer space. And and they took me somewhere where there were other people uh, besides myself. Uh, other human people like from Puerto Rico, I guess. Uh, from here, another human being showed up. He claimed to be from a distant planet. He was dressed in black. He had a dark skin, but he was, he was not a Negro. He had a, a black, long black hair up to the shoulders. And he spoke to us uh, with the mouth, uh, verbally, and not, no telepathic speaking. Uh, he showed us uh, various uh, uh, projections, uh, which looked uh, very real, the projections. And he informed us about a whole bunch of things that are even still incredible to me. Uh, then uh, he, they returned me to... What did this holographic projection show? Uh, the holographs uh, were mainly, uh, the first one that I can remember was a, a, like a short trip uh, through space. Uh, we saw where he, he came from, where he said to be from. We saw his people, we saw his, his, the houses that they used. And, and the second one was about uh, 
a meteor or a rock falling to earth in the near future which is going to cause a lot of um, havoc in in the world this would fall in, it's going to fall in a, very near the the caribbean puerto rico and those um other small islands but it's going to affect the whole world not just a uh, puerto rico uh, the last one is is uh, that they projected it was uh, showing us how there was only going to be one government on on the planet earth uh, they'll be living on some sort of artificial island that, that's going to be floating in the middle of a dark, black, uh, dirty sea. Uh, and then uh, this man uh, returned me uh, to uh, my, my car again and left me somewhere different from where I, the whole uh, ordeal had started. Apparently, they uh, it took me with car and all. Uh, after this, at this given time, I l heard some jets in the sky and I still had my cousin's camera and I took uh, the pictures, uh, four of which are ma I'm making public nowadays. So the jets followed the UFO? Yes, it was. Uh, they seem to be uh, uh, surveilling it. Uh, I only got to uh, capture just one of the, the, the jets in the photograph, but there were actually there were three of them. Uh, or, or maybe I got in one of the photos one, and in the second or third I got one of the other ones, because they would go around it very far away, and while this one was closer, and turn, you know, very far very far and by the time this one was coming back another one was turning over there there was always one or the other close to the to the object to the UFO Jorge Martin has carefully investigated this case Thomas Rivera's case is to me is a very special one and a very important one because uh, in a Morris case he was abducted and he was taken away by aliens one of them was human-like and two small creatures that they explained to him were some type of uh, genetical or biological organic android that they made to do some chores outside so they don't have to uh, risk themselves in our environment that's what they explained to him the so-called human alien that he saw in the craft and it's important also because of the evidences that he has on the case because when he was released he had a camera with him and he was able to take pictures of the object that apparently had abducted him the craft flying saucer type and also some jet fighters from the United States <coughs> excuse me F-14 again in most of these cases in the island F-14s are involved with these situations of chasing and harassment and, and checking on these objects when they are seen in the different areas of the island and they he was able to get them in those pictures together so this clearly when you see those photographs it's obvious that the government has been lying for many years because there's the UFO there and there's also the jet fighters dealing with the situation which they denied for more than four years is there were you able to locate any other witnesses that's what I was going to, to explain at this moment Michael uh, the Amoris case is also very important because I have other several people who apparently had been contacted by the same alien that abducted Amori and the small ones that were with him in a, di in a separate uh, fashion they have nothing to do with Amori's incident this being, this human-like alien is contacting people all around the area of the southwest of Puerto Rico I have people from the town of Yauco who seem to have been contacted by this man I have this fisherman Andres Maldonado uh, who I got in contact with Amori because he told me several things Amori had told no one before, only I knew them about the name of the alien and all the details that he was using to check on the people who really may have been in contact this, uh, the, with the same being the night he was abducted because there were about 14 other people there in the craft that night and when Mandolando told me all this information that he couldn't know because it was, he was not involved with Amori's case uh, I got them together and at this moment I have about three different people who seem to have been in contact with the same alien so they are doing something and they are getting in contact with more and more people and preparing people for something and this is very important because all this corroborates Amori's incident also other witnesses contacted Amori himself 
Uh, so far, uh, between 1988 and 1992, I've been able to localize seven of these people. Uh, because I've gone on different uh, uh, TV shows and uh, different articles and I've, uh, I've always uh, been asking if anybody remembers anything similar uh, happening to them and that year during that time Mother's Day to please get in touch with me. And I, I have gotten in touch with hundreds of people but out of the hundreds, uh, seven definitely were there uh, with me. I still have a seven to go maybe I'll never uh, find them maybe maybe they'll see this you investigated the Rivera case Colonel Stevens what was your impression well of course Jorge Martin took me to meet Jorge Rivera or uh, uh, Maori Rivera uh, shortly after I got there with the Mexican team to study some phenomena in Puerto Rico and when I first met a Maori he was very uh, reluctant to describe his case because it still frightened him to think about it and it took some time before we could uh, develop enough confidence where he was comfortable talking to us about the case but he would still tremble when he thought about it he would, would turn pale he'd become weak he uh, uh, he was frightened but he has now reviewed the details and the points in sufficient length and depth that he can can face the experience without the trauma which he is, has le learned to do and today or yesterday we saw for the first time that he is able to to manage his emotions well enough to describe that contact in considerable detail you carefully analyzed the Rivera photographs we took the pictures yes we took the pictures taken by Amari Rivera to a NASA, consult a NASA consultant facility in Scottsdale where we put them through a computer analysis using latest state-of-the-art equipment. And we found that both the disc-shaped craft seen in the photographs and the aircraft are some considerable distance from the camera between three and five miles. We discovered that the jet fighter was moving and that the disc-shaped craft was moving relatively slow or not moving at all. We discovered that uh, the ambient light conditions were correct in all respects. We were able to eliminate montages, paste-ups, reflections, models, all kinds of forms of technical uh, manipulation of photographs and we had to conclude that the pictures were real and that they were exactly as described by the witness when he took the photographs. Actually, Amuri Rivera was intimidated and pressured by government agents to hand over his pictures. Well, a, a short time after, after the, the incident, a, a three men a, showed up at my home in Puerto Rico and one of them stood in their car downstairs and uh, they claimed to be uh, from a uh, CIA and they gave me they handed me two pieces of paper which I was so nervous I couldn't really read but I remember seeing the the letter CIA which is uh, the intelligence agency from the United States and uh, they said that it would be easier and better for me if I handed them the photographs and the negatives but they did not say you know what photographs or what negatives uh, they didn't specify it. and I just told them that I did not know what they were talking about and They said it, it would be easier because we have at the uh, an order for to register your house to look through your house And I said well go ahead Be my guest and look and they they looked but they couldn't find them because I had I had hit them very well Morris case was not an individual case well, uh, the results are uh, in the sense that this really is happening. There are a pattern that fits in all these cases. Most of the persons involved are women. I would say that five to one, women advantage men, if we can call this an advantage, uh, in being abducted by aliens. Most of the, the abductions are made by the so-called small, big-headed gray creatures uh, or reticulians or whatever. Are, they are being called at this moment and the pattern 
also fits with the cases in the United States and other places in the sense that uh, they seem to be doing something with genetics. They're very interested in our genetics in the reproductive system. Uh, there's an angle in all of this that has also to do something with spiritual uh, development of man.